Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Dave sent me a story out of The Independent, a newspaper from across the pond, but the story was also widely reported here in America. And uh, headline will catch your attention, as it did the guy who has to do something about this. New York skyscraper must remove top 20 floors, judge rules. <laughs> a 52-story building which is built too high by taking advantage of a zoning loophole has been ordered by a court to bring it down just a notch. Uh, Stefanos Chen wrote the story for The Independent, but a uh, state Supreme Court judge in New York has ordered the developers of a nearly completed 668-foot tall building to remove 20 or so floors from the top. Now, you have to understand that New York has got some strange nomenclature for their courts. Their Supreme Court is actually their trial court. The higher ones are appellate courts. So a state Supreme Court judge literally just means that this is the trial court, and obviously an appeal can happen from this. Uh, the decision is a major victory for gr community groups who were against the project, uh, saying that the developers had used a zoning loophole to create the tallest building on the upper west side of Manhattan. A lawyer representing the project said the developers will appeal. Uh, Justice Perry ordered the Department of Buildings to revoke the building permit for the tower at 200 Amsterdam Avenue and remove all floors that exceed the zoning limit. Exactly how many floors? Not quite sure yet. Under one interpretation of the law, the building might have to remove 20 floors from the 52-story tower to meet the regulations. Olive Freud, who is the president of the Committee for Environmentally Sound Development, which is one of the groups behind the lawsuit, says we are elated. The developers knew they were building at their own peril, said Richard Emery, a lawyer representing the community groups that challenged the project before the foundation was even completed. Mr. Emery said this decision sent a warning to other developers who proceed with construction despite pending litigation. The question at the heart of the suit was whether developers had abused zoning rules to justify the project's size. It is common for developers to purchase an unused development right of adjacent buildings to add height and bulk to their project. But in this case, opponents of the project argued that the developers created a gerrymandered, highly unusual 39-sided zoning lot to take advantage of the development rights from a number of tenuously connected lots. Without this technique, the tower might have been as little uh, as 20 stories tall instead of the nearly finished 52-story tower that now stands. Of course, 39-sided is also the die that you use in Dungeons & Dragons. The decision also sets an important precedent according to Elizabeth Goldstein, who's president of the Municipal Art Society of New York, also one of the groups that helped bring the lawsuit. The way this zoning lot was constructed has been invalidated, which is extremely important. Uh, she's hoping that this decision will deter other developers from attempting similar strategies. Scott Mullen, a lawyer with the firm Herrick Feinstein, which is representing the project, said the ruling contradicts earlier decisions from the Department of Buildings and the Board of Standards and Appeals that were based on a long-established zoning interpretation. And he says they will appeal this decision vigorously. <laughs> as opposed to appealing it eh, or appealing it lackadaisically. What comes next is unclear. While further litigation would help effectively postpone any disassembly of the tower, sales at the luxury block could be held up. Can you imagine you're going to buy one of those units that may or may not exist down the road? Marketing is well underway for the 112 luxury apartments, and the most lucrative units are on the top floors including a $21 million penthouse, which would likely be removed if this decision stands. And, you know, this is an interesting quandary some people find themselves in when they run afoul of zoning laws. And I'm talking about the actual building regulations. And, and I can tell you, and I, I, don't, I don't do this work as an attorney, but I'm familiar with it. And I read the cases, and I'm, I'm aware of the cases. And I've heard of cases before where, where, you know, like, for instance, houses are being built on lots, right? Residential houses. And the local municipality says, look, you can build a house within so many feet of the lot line. And somebody moves in and builds a house without paying any attention. They build it too close to the lot line. And I've seen it before where building inspector came by and goes, hey, I think you're too close to the lot line. They measure it. Sure enough, you're three feet too close. Now, it's possible that your neighbor 
if they're for, further away from the lot line than they need to be, might be willing to sell you a three-foot stretch of their property. They might. They might not. And I've seen cases before where this homeowner asks next door homeowner, hey, can I buy three feet of your property? And they go, no. Solution, saw off the three feet of the house. I've seen court orders to do that. I've also seen it before where somebody built a house that they weren't supposed to. And I remember seeing one where somebody built a cabin on their own property, they thought, but partly it was built on state land. And it's one of those things where you wonder if they didn't know, because there's so much state land, especially in Michigan, that some people probably think, I'll build it. Who's going to catch me? Well, somebody caught them. And half the thing was on state land and half was on their property. But of course, they still built it too close to state land. And of course, they go to court and fight it and say, well, now that it's built, can't we keep it? And this is one of those remedies. A remedy is what a court can do to solve a problem in the most basic sense. And this is one of those remedies that seems very harsh to people. They say, wait, they built a skyscraper. Now they got to saw off the top 20 stories. Or I built a house too close to the lot line. I got saw off three feet. Or, or I built this building here and it turns out I got to remove the whole thing. That seems harsh. Seems harsh. <laughs> it also seems like you should have done your homework beforehand. Because you can imagine, and this is one where you have to think like a chess player and go a couple moves down the road in each direction and go, what happens if, what happens if, what happens if? What happens if they don't do anything about the person who builds too close to the lot line? Well, there goes the rule. The rule doesn't mean anything anymore. What happens if they don't make the person saw off or remove the portion that's too close? Rule becomes meaningless. And so the interesting lesson that somebody pointed out here is they said, you know, there was pending litigation. They knew this lawsuit was there. And by building, despite the presence of the lawsuit, it means that you're running the risk that you could have an adverse ruling down the road. Then what do you do? Because they've already built past that point. That's the point. they got to remove as many as 20 stories from this building. And I suspect that while building is an expensive endeavor, unbuilding is expensive also. <laughs> so uh, it's a crazy story. It's making headlines, especially in New York City, where there's a race to put up things to blot out the sun from the sky. And, uh, you know, I visit there once in a while. I've jogged Central Park many times. And uh, you almost always do it in the shade. <laughs> There's shade coming in from all directions. So there you go. And once again, Dave, thanks for the story. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Seen it all. Done it all. Can't remember most of it.